The 2020s have already given us 23 brand new superhero movies in just the last four years alone, and I'm not gonna lie, the quality has not been there for a lot of them. So here's my ranking of all 23 new superhero movies of the decade from worst to best. In dead last, I have Wonder Woman 1984. I feel like people forget just how terrible this movie is, which is just such a shame because the first Wonder Woman movie was actually pretty solid. This one's just almost unwatchable. Like, whoever wrote this script honestly should never get another chance to work on a movie again. At number 22, I have Black Adam. This movie is just so unbelievably dull and lifeless to me. When you have these super overpowered, pretty much invincible characters like Black Adam is, you really need a good story and a good personality for that character to make people actually care about the movie. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a super likable guy, but somehow they stripped all of his likability out of this role and just made him a pretty much monotone robot. The fights are also all pretty boring because like, oh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's just gonna win every single time as Black Adam. Dr. Fate is pretty much the only redeeming part of this entire movie. I really enjoyed his character and it's just such a shame it got so wasted on this film. At 21 is Madam Web. I know a lot of people want to just jump on this as being the worst film ever created, but there are some redeeming qualities. Okay, there's not a lot, but like the cinematography is actually okay. Like the film looks pretty decent, but yes, everything else in this film is pretty terrible. Like the writing and editing is just laughably bad. This movie might also have the worst supervillain of all time. Like, this dude is actually just a terrible character. The writing is bad. The ADR over his voice lines where it's not matching up with his mouth, that's terrible. His performance literally feels like they ripped him straight out of a soap opera. And honestly, I don't even know if this movie should count as a superhero film because there's barely any powers. Like, Madame Webb sees like five seconds into the future for most of the film. And these other spider women, if you can even call them that, never actually wear the suits in the movie. You only see it for five seconds through a vision of the future. It's so dumb. Number 20 for me is Eternal is my least favorite MCU movie still to this day. There is simply way too many different characters in this movie and almost all of them are super uninteresting and underdeveloped. Like the only ones I was somewhat interested in is pretty much Thena. And this is obviously the MCU trying to make this more serious prestige Oscar bait kind of movie, but it resulted in just an ultimately super boring movie. 19 is Shazam Theory of the Gods. Well, I wasn't even the biggest fan of the first one. I did think it had a lot of fun and charm and somehow this one lost all of it. Like the humor was just not hitting in this one. I know the internet hates Zachary Levi and honestly, it is kind of justified because he is kind of an asshole online half the times, but I do feel like he actually was really good as his character, so I do feel bad for him that he didn't get a better script to work with. But this was one of the last films of the dying DCEU. It never really stood a chance. At number 18 is Morbius. This movie is just unbelievably stupid from start to finish. Jared Leto has completely lost all the sauce as an actor. I do think he used to be good when he was younger, but now it's just not there. I really just need Sony to stop taking these D-list characters that almost nobody even cares about when they are fighting Spider-Man and putting them in their own movies as the main character without Spider-Man. It's never gonna work well. At number 17 is The Flash, a movie I went into really wanting to like. And there are elements of this movie that are good. Like everything between Barry and his mom actually works super well. I like seeing Michael Keaton's Batman and Supergirl in this movie. I think they were two of the best characters. There's a lot of problems. First of all, two Barry Allens talking to each other got really old really fast for me. I was getting super annoyed with it. The CGI is just super sloppy in this and there's just some offensively bad decisions like bringing the past Supermans back from the dead with CGI. I can't believe they did that still. And there's really like no villain in this movie too so there's just way too many problems for it to actually be considered a good film for me. At 16 is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, a movie again I really wanted to love. I love the first two Ant-Man movies but this was just not good. Those first two movies were just such smaller scale kind of heist movies and then with the third one we threw that all away. We got rid of all the ex-cons that were super funny and go into this whole quantum verse. First of all everything looks like garbage. Everything's a CGI creature and it's just super dull to look at. The thing with the Ant-Man family was not working as well as they were banking on it working. The best part of this movie is everything between Michelle Pfeiffer's character and King. 15 is Venom Let There Be Carnage. I love the first Venom and I was going into this knowing it was going to be absolutely dumb as balls but expecting just to have that kind of fast food type of movie and that's exactly what I got. This is dumb. It's stupid. It's pretty much a bad movie on every level of filmmaking but I still had a decent amount of fun with this because Woody Harrelson as Carnage was just such a blast. These movies know that they're pretty bad and corny which I can actually appreciate. 14 is Birds of Prey. Now I absolutely love Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. She is incredible as that role but this movie really Relies so heavily on its humor and it did not work for me. I felt like a ripoff of Deadpool type of humor. I did really enjoy Ewan McGregor as the Black Mask as the villain. I would really love to see him in more superhero projects because he was just a ton of fun in this and I think Black Canary was a good supporting character. But the rest of the Birds of Prey are really just nothing characters and I just could not care for them. At 13 is the Marvels. I think this movie is perfectly fine and pretty much overhated by everybody. Is it perfection? No. There's lots of again dumb jokes. That's a theme with a lot of these movies in this decade. But I think a lot of the action is actually pretty fun and unique at least for the MCU and I really like the chemistry between our main three Marvels here. The biggest takeaway from this film for me that makes it go down a grade 
is that this lady as the villain is not only one of the worst MCU villains of all time, she is just one of the most forgettable movie characters I've ever seen in my life. Like the second she was off the screen, I already forgot who she was. The sad thing is they actually gave her a pretty decent motivation, but they somehow forgot to make the character itself actually interesting. 12 is Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This was definitely a step down from the first Aquaman. That's actually one of my favorite DCEU movies of all time. I had a blast with that one. And this still keeps a lot of the same fun. Jason Momoa in this role is just, again, a ton of fun. His chemistry with his brother was pretty good too. James Wan brought the sauce in some of the action sequences, particularly the final fight has some really cool shots in it. But for every moment that was actually really cool or really funny, there's another one that's just as lame or dull. So sadly, it balances out to just be a pretty decent average film. At 11 is Thor Love and Thunder. Its biggest offense is that it throws a ton of jokes at the wall, hoping ones will stick, and pretty much 90% of them are not funny. But I'm not gonna lie, I actually think there's a lot of super solid stuff in this movie. Like, everything with Jane's storyline really worked for me. Gore was obviously one of the greatest MCU villains we ever got. Sadly, we kind of wasted Christian Bale on that role, though. And yes, yeah, sadly, a lot of those moments did get undermined by bad jokes, but I can still appreciate the things that it did do well and not say it's like the blatantly worst movie of all time, just because it's not funny to me. Hen is Blue Beetle, a huge jump up in quality. This was just a really charming and wholesome time. Like, I really loved how much this movie died into the family aspects of things. The biggest knocks against it is that it is just kind of a generic superhero story and the villain is definitely not the greatest. Number nine is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which I've watched three times since it came out and every time I actually end up liking it a bit less because maybe it's just me, but I feel like almost everybody's performance in this is just super stiff for some reason. Like the way they're reading lines just does not come off naturally. The only one that I think actually has an amazing performance is Wanda and her being as incredible as a villain as she is and Raimi bringing his style and sauce to this movie is why it's so high for me because I still do absolutely Absolutely love it for those reasons, but it's definitely far from a perfect movie. Number eight, I have Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I was really not sure how to feel about Shuri being the new Black Panther because I wasn't the biggest fan of her character in the other movies. I thought she was kind of annoying, but she actually was really good in this movie, in my opinion. The Moor was a great villain, and I really liked a lot of the stuff just going on with Wakanda's politics in this movie, and I feel like this is as good as this film could have been without Chadwick. Seven is Shang-Chi, some of the greatest fight scenes in the entire MCU. I just loved all the different martial arts they brought into this. Everything with him and his dad works really well. Aquafina does bring this down a couple points though, because I just cannot stand her in like 90% of her roles, and this is no exception. And I really hate that the final battle just becomes this big CGI galop fest, because everything else leading up to it was so original. Number six is Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm just as surprised as you that it's up this high for me, because I am not a Zack Snyder fan, and I was not a fan of the original Justice League, but some reason this really worked for me. I think the simple answer is that every time Zack Snyder makes a movie, he really just cannot get it into a compact thing. But if you can actually give him that four hours like this movie does, he can develop every character and every element of the story so perfectly. Like, I really wish he would just do TV, because if he had that long of like an entire season of eight to ten hours of television, he could be giving us some amazing content. He just cannot make a good two-hour movie. Five is Spider-Man No Way Home. I'll never forget how electric this movie was in theaters opening night, finally seeing that, yes, Toby and Andrew were in this. Sadly, every time I rewatch it, the first like hour and everything with Doctor Strange is super clunky and honestly pretty terrible. But once we get about like halfway through, Doctor Strange is just locked away out of the movie for a little bit and Aunt May dies. That's where things start really picking up and this becomes a top tier MCU movie. Plus, Willem Dafoe coming back 20 years later and still being the best part of this film as the Green Goblin is just so legendary. Number four is The Suicide Squad. This is just such a blast of a movie and absolutely hilarious. James Gunn just knows how to make an ensemble film work. This movie is what gives me a lot of faith in James Gunn's new DCU. I feel like he can really cook. Speaking of James Gunn absolutely cooking, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was the perfect conclusion to the Guardians story. Like, this film was hitting on all-time highs on both the humor aspect and the emotional side, but neither took away from each other, and it was just such a beautiful film. Number two is The Batman. I absolutely adored everything about this movie. Just the atmosphere around Gotham was incredible. Digging more into the detective side of Batman is what I've wanted to see in a live-action movie for a long time, and this movie pretty much just gives me Detective Batman, which I loved. It's absolutely gorgeous looking. I love the cinematography of this, and it's three hours and never really has a dull moment. Just an absolute masterpiece. Let me know your three favorite superhero movies of the decade in the comment below, and make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. But come on, we all know my number one is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This is just perfection. The animation is absolutely beautiful. One of the best original soundtracks I've ever heard of a movie. And this movie is throwing a ton of different characters and variations of characters at you, but somehow it just feels so grounded still and you care about all of them. It's simply one of the all-time great superhero movies, and I cannot wait to see the conclusion of Miles' story in Beyond the Spider-Verse. Speaking of which, click up here to see my video about how Beyond the Spider-Verse can be the perfect movie.